Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Rob. <laughs> Off on another adventure, I see. Yeah, we're gonna do it. I think it's a uh, big Mackinac today. See ya. Aloha. <laughs> I'm going with these guys. <laughs> I suppose we could give you a hand there. Oh, that's Gen all right. You know that we are. You look I, really I'm occupied. I'm talking about your wife, not you. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. We're coming to you from Lake Chelan. Northwest Fishing Reports today is fishing with Lance Effring of Washington Guide Services. We've been out with you before and had great success up on Stahican for uh, Kokanee and some Chinook. So today we're doing something completely different. We're fishing Lake Lakers today, or Mackinac, whichever you prefer to call them. But, um... Yeah, we got a few, little bit different technique than kind of some people. I don't recommend it for every boat, but um, you know, we'll kind of go through that a little bit later and talk about more about what we're doing and things like that. But one of the things uh, you'd mentioned over the phone with me is that uh, today we're going to be going for quality, not quantity. Correct. Yep. Yeah, and the, the way that I fish, uh, right on the bottom, dragging through the mud, is uh, uh, I tend to get bigger fish. So. All right, well, I'm really uh, interested to see how this plays out. So we've got our lines down and as they say, let's go fishing. All right, let's do it. So we're mile an hour, huh? 1.3. What is it gonna look like when it hits? It'll, it'll bounce. When we get down here, it'll bounce, start bouncing really, really fast. And then all of a sudden, it'll just load up and it'll just start digging pretty hard or it'll pop off if it pops off just walk over and start reeling before we even do anything with it if you look at that that uh, fish finder right there we just had something come up and uh, look at that kokanee rod and then it swam back down to the bottom All right, well, first one of the day, first Laker. Constant pressure on This is not a 20 pounder though, I'll tell you that. So we're really not too deep here, are we, Lance? We're no, we're running uh, 120 140 feet. feet on that one. This is gonna be an eater, I would say. Your smaller ones are generally better, better eating fish. They don't have as much fat in them. They're eating more mice, shrimp, and things like that, so. They put up a better fight coming up from shallows, you know, 100, 150 feet. Those fish that I've caught 300 feet down there's not, not so much, much there. Not much there. Oh, they got there we that go. Big, That's a nice fish. They got a Look big air bladder. Look at that. Yeah. So 
So we'll talk a little bit about that air bladder because this one's got a pretty good bladder on him. So that hook popped out right as Lance netted him. Lance, you don't mind me showing the nope. viewers your uh, you're good on your lure here. That's called the bleeding frog. Bleeding frog. Yeah, got a little bit of red in it. That's an interesting pattern. Yeah, from that's Mag Lips, Yakima Bay. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's one of my favorites. Let's get him out of here. He's uh, got sharp teeth, so. You guys want to watch these fish. They do have sharp teeth and they will cut you. Yep. But that's a nice representative, uh, probably about a four or five pounder. Yeah. I would guess. Perfect eating size. Those are perfect. That's gonna cut fairly red and, and uh, it's gonna have, not have a lot of fat. It's probably eating a lot of mice and shrimp, so. Uh, make a liar out of me now. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's going to be 5.7 pounds. 5.7. Nice. And see, this is all air bladder. That big old belly on it. So if we were to release that fish, it's just going to float on top of the water because it hasn't released all that air. So what I do with some of the bigger fish is um, I have a deep water release. And I'll show you that here after a while and I'll kind of go through how all that works, but I just put it on the downrigger, put the fish on the downrigger and send it back down. And it's just like out in the ocean where we're required to carry those releases. You know, we just put them on there and release those fish down. But So we're gonna take care of this, get him in the cooler and get him uh, all blood out and we'll be good. We're visiting with Lance Efrig of Washington Guide Services. And um, we're using a technique for targeting the bigger lakers here in Lake Chelan. Lance, why don't you go over again the, the technique itself, and then we'll take a look at some of the gear. Okay, so I use uh, uh, a technique that I believe draws in the bigger fish. Uh, I think the bigger fish lay more on the very bottom of the lake. Um, they're very, the big fish are lazier than the smaller fish. They don't move around as much, so, um, I take the downriggers and I run them all the way down to the mud. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't do this in all parts of the lake, but up, out, out here on Mac Bar, we can do that. So I take the ball, I run it all the way down, I let it set right on the bottom. So when that ball hits the bottom, we all know you're supposed to bring it up two or three feet. You don't do that. I don't do that. Um, I let that ball drag right through the mud. Um, and my belief is, is, is that that fish is sitting there laying there and then when that ball comes by it will has to move out of the way and then when it comes back to let's say it's bed uh, then 100 feet later there here comes my bait and then they attack because yep. I don't think those fish move those bigger fish don't move very far maybe a foot or two to uh, attack those baits when they come by so makes sense a big fish like that uh, expends more energy swimming a lot and they're just gonna sit and Hold their turf and wait wait for that food to come to them right for sure right for sure now uh, with this all being said I don't recommend doing this on like a light aluminum boats because we do hang up a downrigger ball once in a while puts tremendous pressure on your downriggers it's hard on equipment yeah but I mean if you're gonna go for big fish you know it, it, it takes some some uh, uh, some guts to go do that sometimes so uh, and you mentioned earlier this technique, you're not going to get the numbers, but you're going to get the quality. I tend to get, you know, my biggest, my best days are like nine, nine fish, but they're 140 to 145 pounds That's of total of, fish. That's a lot of fish. So, I mean, I don't get numbers of, you know, 15 or 20 fish, but my, my fish tend to be more quality. And the other thing we've been talking here on the boat uh, in between fish is that you uh, tend to release the bigger fish to keep the smaller fish what's your guidelines on that um well of course it's your fishery um if you want to keep a big fish you keep the big fish mm -hmm. um they don't eat as well i think they're more oily they got a little stronger taste so the better the better fish are the smaller ones to eat and when uh, we say smaller we're talking you know probably 10 pounds and under 10 pounds and under yeah. okay so um i have this uh 
this release here. It's actually called, it's called a sequelizer. Okay, so I, I, we pop it open, pop it open, put it, put it right in the, right on the fish's mouth. I set the, the depth. This one here in particular is 50, 100 or 150. I clip this right back on the downrigger, right on the downrigger. And then uh, I slowly lower that downrigger and I can watch that fish uh, on my fish finder. I can watch it release. Speaking of release, we just had a release. Oh, just popped off the... It's stuck on bottom. Well, that's something else you're gonna get once in a while <laughs> yeah, with this technique. You're gonna get snagged on yeah. the bottom. Stay tuned. We'll talk about plugs in a moment. So this is uh, another issue that uh, I run into quite often fishing out here, fishing, dragging the bottom and all that stuff is, uh, I get hooked up on the bottom and this is sometimes like what I get when I bring it back in, <laughs> broke off. So um, it's just the price of uh, going after the trophy, trophy uh, Mackinac out here on Lake Chelan. Well, we're back after that unfortunate loss of a plug. So you were uh, showing us the descending tool here. Yep. So I just hook it on. I set the, the depth real quick here. Um, I usually set it 100 feet. They say you set it about one third the depth of what you catch the fish at. Hook it right, hook it right onto my downrigger, lower that down. Um, I can watch it on my fish finder and I can tell when that fish releases and swims back down the bottom so it's a safe release. Because uh, we talked about having big air bladders. Right, you probably noticed on the uh, the shot of the previous fish we caught, big old fat tummy, and that's the air bladder bulging out. Right, right, yeah. right. So, so when, with this device, that allows it to decompress, and then when this releases, oh, there's a release. <laughs> it looked like that. another false release. It looked good. It did. It looked like just like one. Yeah. Having a hard time finishing this interview. Uh, so we lost the fish over there, lost the plug over here. One of the things about this technique is you better be willing to lose some gear, right? Yes. Yes. I, I lose quite a bit of gear. Uh, it's, it's pretty hard because you're dragging the bottom. And you know, Lake Chelan's got a lot of stuff in it. A lot of, you know, you'd be amazed at 190 feet. I bring up milfoil, so it, it grows down there. So, yep. Some of your favorite lures down here. Yep. So I run a lot of maglips, 3.5s. Um, this one happens to be the bloody frog. That's what we got the fish on today. Uh, so um, I run those. I run a lot of the the T4s. In the, a lot of my colors are pretty much dark. You know, I run a lot of darker colors. This plug here, uh, it's an, also a T4. It's got a glow belly on it. This one, this plug here is actually the plug that uh, with the state record Mackinac was caught on in 2013. This is the one here. So we run these ones a lot. Um, I run these, uh, these are, uh, I'll probably get this wrong, but it's like uh, Alaskan hemlock or something like that. They get the moisture content down to like 3%, so when you get down to depths, they don't crush or explode. Uh, these uh, are Super Plugs by Superflies. Um, I run those in, in darker color, colors, obviously, too. Um, when I do a little bit of bait fishing, uh, when I say bait, I will uh, uh, use like uh, herring or I'll even put night crawlers sometimes on here. You can catch squawfish, put chunks of squawfish on it. And uh, I run super fly flies. Uh, they, these things light up. They got tremendous UV in them. And you get them in the water and then you just use a spin, spin glow or spin drift on there. And uh, that spin, that corky will also allow you to adjust the depth of your bait per se so if you don't want if you want the bait on the bottom you can take the corky off if you want it kind of fluttering on the bottom you can leave it on you can add another one it'll actually float it so 
by adding one or taking it you know away you can you can uh, adjust you know kind of how that bait is floating off of the bottom mm -hmm. you run a plug on one side and a bait on the other and side and see what the fish want that's correct yep yep i didn't have any pike minnow today because we was up uh, doing the kokanee yesterday or so but uh yeah you run a lot of pike minnow on it and and they that seems to be the the bait of choice well thanks lance we're going to give this another go at a different spot right that's correct we're gonna we're gonna move up lake a little bit looks like the weather's kind of calmed down the wind's calmed down so it won't be so bad up there but we're gonna go try another spot for, for, right. for a little while let's go get them <laughs>